Welcome to this video series where we are going through a CAT or Computer Applications Technology PRAC exam, paper one from the June supplementary exams. These are the rewrite exams from 2024 for grade 12. So it's a good exam paper to practice on for your revision. So let's get stuck into this paper with our question one. Just a reminder, when we open up our question paper, you'll see in the instructions it tells you about how to extract the data files. So in order to do that, we're going to double click on the exe file which your school will have given to you and then it'll ask you to extract those files. Make sure that you extract to the drive where your school will collect your data files from. We click on extract and it's going to ask for a password and the password is over there. You can see it's zoo321. Take note of the capital Z. So we'll type in zoo321. You can always just double check that it's correct when you click OK. And when we go into our exam folder, just double check that inside this folder that you've got all your data files. Looks like they've all extracted correctly. I'm happy with that. Once that's done, then you can then rename this to your exam number, whatever your exam number is. I don't have an exam number, but make sure that that folder is your examination number and only your examination number. And then once you've done that, you've got the data files which you can now use, which match the ones listed in the exam paper. And we can now start with our question one word processing question. Just a reminder that we will have a link in the video description, which will have this exam paper, the data files, the question paper. So give the paper a go before you start this video. It might be a good idea just to practice your word and then take notes of the questions that you struggle with. So that you can come back here and find out how to do them. So we've got to open up a document called one zoo which i have over here already opened and we start with 1.1 apply automatic hyphenation to the document that's just a setting if we come here to layout you can see there is the hyphenation and we want it to be automatic and then you would have seen some of the longer words would have adjusted according to that then we're going to insert the slice light cover page in the document to display only the title and the subtitle controls so we're going to then go to insert and there is the cover page. We want the slice light one. So if I scroll down, there is the slice light. I'm going to click on it and you see there are quite a few things here that we can use. They only want the title and the subtitle controls. So if I put my mouse on there, you can see that's the title and that's the subtitle, which means we do not want the school or the course title. So I can actually just, this whole block, I can delete and remove that. Then 1.3, modify the heading style as follows. We're going to expand the character spacing by three points and we're going to apply a 3D top bevel format text effect with a height of five points. Okay, there's quite a bit of detail there, but we're modifying a style, which means when we come here to home, we can see all our different styles there. If I put my mouse over there, you can see that is a heading one style. I'm going to right click on it and modify it. I'm just going to scroll down because that's a heading one style. So when I change this, you should see the changes to that one. That is my heading one style. I'm going to right click on it and modify it. And if you remember, they want a character spacing. If I come here, I think that is to do with the font. And if we come here to advanced, everyone forgets about character spacing here is under advanced. And we want to expand it by three points, which means the spacing mustn't be normal. It must be expanded by not one, but by three points. That's the first setting. We click OK. The next setting was a text effects. If I just go to format that's under the text effects options and we want a 3D format top bevel. Now I don't think that's anything to do with the full outline. I think it's got more to do with these text effects over here. So a 3D bevel. So let's go to 3D format. Ah, there's the word top bevel. So they want some sort of top bevel effect. So we can pick one of them and we want the height to be five points. So the height we're going to make into five points. So you'll notice when you see all these words, character spacing, expand, three points, 3D top level, text effects, height, five points, all of those words will be in the settings that you are looking for. So you just got to find where those settings are. So if I click OK and then click OK again, and there you can see that our heading one has now changed. Next, 1.4, insert and right align a field in the header to display only the current here. So that's in the header. So I'm going to double click over here into the header part. You can also come here to insert and go to the header that way. I'm going to double click there. We're in the header section and we want to insert a date field. Now you can see here's a whole bunch of fields we've got over here. 
So if I click on date and time, we can see over here, there's nothing here that says we can change the format. It doesn't say we can say just the year. So what I'm going to rather do then is come over here to, to quick parts. And there you can actually see the field. Let's see if we get more options over here. And we want the date. So if I scroll down, we can see there's the date. We can get the current date. So here we've got a little bit more options available. So here's the format. So here we can actually specify. Wow, 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 wow. So that's going to be a better option if I click on that because that's the code for just the year aspect. So let's click OK and see what it does. So there we've got the date format and it is going to be on, it needs to be right aligned. At the moment it's on the Beyonce, I mean on the left. So we're just gonna then put it on the left hand side. So it's over there and there we've got it. So just remember, if you don't have the options that you want, for example, over there, you can go and insert a field and it does give you more options there. Then 1.5, modify the footnote layout and format on page two as shown in the screenshot below. So we want it to look like that. So we can see that it says three footnotes there and they're all next to each other and it's Roman numerals. I don't know what the difference is to what we've got. Let's have a look. We scroll down to the bottom of page R. So there we've got our footnotes. And the thing I'll notice is that, first of all, they are one underneath each other, where here they are in almost like in columns or tabs, and they are using Roman numerals. So I think those are the two things we must change. So if I click on one of them, and then we right click and go to note options, we can come over here to the note options. Now the first thing I'm gonna change here is I don't want it to be one column. I'm gonna change it to three columns. I think that will make them spread out across one two three and then the format we said we want them to be roman numerals so i'm going to use the small letter roman numerals that should be what they wanted over there so let's try a plot and there we go we can see that it's done the changes that we want so when in doubt just right click i just right clicked on the footnote and went to the note options then i could change the settings to look like that let's move on to 1.6 find the subheading did you know which is over there there's the did you know and apply paragraph settings so that this heading will always appear on a new page but they're not asking for a page break generally that we normally put in they want a paragraph setting they've underlined this word for a reason so look at how they ask the question so they're not asking you to just put in a page break they're asking you to change a paragraph setting Remember, we're looking for the word page break. So I'm going to select this and we're going to, let's go to the paragraph options and we can see that we want to look for something for about a page break. So I don't see anything over here. It could be over here and a line and page breaks. And I've got a funny feeling it's that page break before. If we click on that, I think that will make sure that it's always on a brand new page. Okay, so that's what they're looking at a paragraph setting and not just a normal page break that we would normally insert. So when reading the question, just look, there's a reason why they underline stuff. There's a reason why they use particular wording use that to guide you and then 1.7 we're going to find the text below the subheading prices start from so let's scroll down there's prices start from and modify this text to display in a table as shown below so we want it to be in a table that looks like that there's quite a bit of settings here allowing a one centimeter spacing between the cells in the table options so let's first get it into that layout so we want that and that to be in different columns and then that's going to be some sort of merged row at the bottom so this is the part that messes me up a bit because that's pretty easy to separate so let's just select these first because i think these will be easier to put into a table because we can just separate by that slash so if i come here to insert and table and convert text to table we can say we want it into two columns separated into four rows and the separator what separates the text is that slash so let's go hey, it's other it's that slash let's see what that does okay so there it moved it into the parts that we want and then i'm going to put a brand new tab at the bottom here and put all of this text inside of that bottom one but we want it to be one big cell at the bottom so if i come here you see that's how it looks so we've got our data that is separated but now the other thing that we must take note of is the spacing, all this little spacing. So the cell spacing must be one centimeter. So that's for the whole table. So I'm going to select the whole table and I'm going to right click and go to table properties and we want cell spacing. So we've got the, I want to come here to options. And if I look over here, oh, there's cell spacing. So we want to allow a one centimeter cell spacing. So let's make that one centimeter. And then we're going to click OK. There we go. I think it looks like we want. Just take note, if we did go to table properties and you actually went to cell and then options, you would have noticed that there's no cell spacing here because 
cell spacing has to do with the whole table so that's why that's under the options for just the table options so just to remember that just because you're dealing with cell spacing doesn't mean you're dealing with individual cells you're dealing with the whole table's relationship to those cells so there we go so i think that is correct i think that looks exactly like how they want it so we can now move on to 1.8 accept all track changes in this document so we're going to come over here to review because that's where the track changes are and we can accept and we're going to accept all changes so i'm going to click on accept all changes that's just one mark so we've just done that 1.9 we're going to add a seven centimeter tab to the existing tab settings so that the text below the heading emergency numbers will appear as follows so we want it to look like this let's go to emergency number here's the emergency numbers and if I select there, there is a tab over there at eight point something. We want to add a seven centimeter tab to the existing tab setting so that the text below the heading will appear as follows. So a seven centimeter tab. So I'm going to select that text. We're going to go to, we can double click on that tab if you want to get to tabs, or you can go here to home paragraph and then tabs. That would have also worked. And we want a seven centimeter. Now just take note, something that's different that you might not be aware of, that little line there is a bar. It's a bar tab, it puts a little bar into your tab. So we actually want it to be the bar tab over there. And I'm going to set it at seven centimeters, set. Go okay. So do you see it set that bar over there, but now we want to move all of our data to the correct place. So we want the numbers to be on this side, which is will be at that particular tab. So if I click in front of the numbers and just press a tab, and then this number will put a tab, and then that number will put a tab, and then that number will put a tab. So now all our numbers are on the other side of the bar, which looks exactly like that. So that's how you get that little line over there. That's what's called a bar tab, but something different. You might be used to your leaders and left and right tab but that is a bar tab it looks like that just a little bar and then it says do not use columns because we would be very tempted to use columns for that okay 1.10 we're nearly there guys find the text question 1.10 and insert a table of figures without page numbers so here we've got 1.10 we're going to insert a table of figures we're going to come here to references and we're going to insert a table of figures so i'm going to click on table of figures but we do not want page numbers. So it's simply, it's say, I do not show the page numbers. We just want the table of figures. We're going to click OK. And that's exactly what they want. So that's my table of figures. And then the last question, find and replace all occurrences of the word Johannesburg Zoo with the text JHB. And we want a little cat at the end of it. Okay, so we need to do that. So take note, the, the symbol is Webding's character code 246. And only the cat symbol appears in red font. So this is quite complicated to try to get two different settings. So this is going to require us to change the font and the color, and it's going to affect everything if we do it together. So maybe just change Johannesburg to JHB and the word zoo to that cat. So what I'm going to do is let's change, let's, let's first get the text going. And we're going to try to get to that little cat symbol. I'll show you what I'm going to do for that. So this is a character code of 246. Okay, so let's try this. We're going to come here and we're going to come here to home. We're going to go here to find replace and we're going to come here for Johannesburg Zoo. Let's make sure we spell it correctly. Johannesburg Zoo. And we're going to replace it with the text JHB. But we want this little cat symbol, which is a Webding's character code of 246. Now to get a character code, to get any symbol, you can press Alt and then 246. So let's try this. I'm going to come here to end of Johannesburg and type in space Alt. And on my keypad, I'm going to press Nort. 246 and I get that symbol. If I just type in Alt 246, I get a very different symbol. So it's Alt 0 246 normally. Let's just try that. So now it doesn't look like a cat, but that's the symbol in this font for that particular cat. So Johannesburg to just replace it like that. Just, just do those replacements. So let's go replace all. There's no other major setting besides that. I know we've got to do the color and all that, but let's just do that and let's see how many we get. So we're going to replace all. So there were six replacements done. I looked at the memo, there are six of them. So that's fine. So if I move this out the way and just scroll a bit, we can have a look and see. Oh, so there's one of them. So we can use that to judge us. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace that symbol. I'm not going to say change that alt naught two four six symbol and i'm going to change it to whatever it is at the moment a naught two four six symbol so i'm changing it to what it is but i'm going to change just the cat part which is that symbol and i'm going to change its format to webdings so the font will be webdings so i'm going to come here to find webdings there it is i'm going to change it to webdings 
and click OK. And I want the font to be red. So I should stay there and just go on your A. The font must be red. So we want that red color. So we are now only changing that symbol to a WebDings format and a red. Let's try to do that. Let's go replace all. So it also made the six changes and go click OK. So we've made it change to red, but it did not change the cat symbol. OK, so let's just try something else. So I'm actually going to come here somewhere, just run where random, where I can actually add. There we are. I'm going to come here, insert a symbol. Let's go find that cat. So let's go to where we are in WebDings. We're going to type in here 246. So there's the cat. I'm going to insert it. So there's my little cat. So I'm going to take a, I'm going to cut it. I just want the cat. So I'm going to cut it and let's go back to that find replace. We still want to replace that little funny symbol because we don't like that symbol anymore. And I'm going to replace it. I'm going to go and see if I can control V and it pastes that symbol. Okay. Which, and I want to make sure that that format font is WebDings. Maybe we didn't change it to WebDings. Maybe we didn't, maybe it undid the WebDings part. So let's change it to WebDings. Click OK. WebDings font red. Let's go replace all. You made six replacements. Click OK. Oh, do we see our cat? There's our cat. So, OK, it was quite complicated. So what we did, just what I would do in that case, is I replaced Johannesburg Zoo with that, but then I gave it something that I know would not be anywhere else in the document. You could have made like a special code or something like that, and then you replace that code with the special things of the character. That If you need to get a special WebDings character, then you can go and insert it somewhere and then just go copy it, and then you can paste it. So there we go. So I think all of the JHB has a little red cat now at the end. Ooh, that was quite challenging but we got there eventually so well done we're now going to move on to the next word question just a reminder would really support the channel if you could click on that subscribe button leave a like leave a comment as well as following us on tiktok don't forget our computer terms channel which is for your theory and remember don't do it the long way do it the mr long way